Hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. Uh, my website is jasonbirdspreacher.com. Don't forget Royal Blood Ministries website and uh, there's Twitter. You can get me on Twitter, just Google uh, Jason Preacher Twitter. Jason Burns Preacher Twitter, you'll get me. And uh, Facebook as well, um, where you can look at lots of uh, Bible teaching from people like Alistair Begg and people like that. Uh, I'd like us to uh, look at this book and I'm going to read from sections of this book and just talk about it. Uh, it's by David Marshall, The Battle for the Bible. Um, it's published by Autumn House. And it's a very good book uh, in the defence of the Bible. It, it is an excellent book. I wouldn't agree with everything. There's a bit about... Uh, Westcott and Hawks and textual criticism uh, and that bit I would take a guy called Dean Bergen's side but apart from that this book is really helpful it's really good and um, so we're going to look at some of what he has to say and just talk about it <coughs> so um, He talks about how was the Bible written. He writes, Paul, who wrote about two-thirds of the part of the Bible called the New Testament, fell foul of the Roman Empire. Foul of the Roman Empire. During the last winter of his life, under sentence of death, he smuggled a letter to his student Timothy. In it we find these words, Do your best to come to me quickly. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. Paul wanted his heavy overcoat. How could a scholar concentrate on his studies in a dark, battleground ground level Roman dungeon? To have his scrolls and parchments to hand was even more vital. Following the conquest of Alexander the Great after 33 BC, the word had been Hellenized. Everyone who was anyone spoke the Keoin, the Greek dialect common to all countries. Paul was no exception, hence the word he used for cloak was uh, philions, and the word for scrolls was biblion, and the word for parchments, membrana. The Greek word for scrolls and parchment reflect the material from which they were made. A biblion was a reed plant which grew on river banks, and the inner leaf or bark of this plant was dried in strips, and rows of the dried strips, crisscross fashioned, were gummed together to make writing material. The Greek word membrana membrana was actually borrowed from latin and means membrane this was part of an animal skin also processed for use as writing material but in tracing the origin of the word bible biblion is the clue among the alternative names for the plant from which it was made was biblios this name was given by the greeks to a town in phoenicia biblios when referring to the old and new testament greek speaking christians used the word t biblia the books latin speaking Christians came to use the two testaments as one book and called it Biblia, treating it as a singular noun, hence the English word Bible. The language of the Bible, uh, Hebrew, Sabra literally means cactus flower these days. However, it is the term used in Israel for the secularly minded young Israelites born in Israel who work for the kibbutzim, 45 villages based around farming but including some industries and crafts. Sabras are commonly employed by archaeologists in the digs in Israel. Typically, kibbutzim, kibbutzim contains no synagogue and are entirely Hebrew speaking. Recently, an archaeologist was discussing Deuteronomy, the fifth of the Bible 66 books, with a visitor. He had an ancient fragment of Biblion with a chapter or two written in the Hebrew, in which the bulk of the New Testament was set down. Ivrit, or modern Hebrew, the archaeologist was saying, represents a revival of ancient Hebrew carried out in the early years of the 20th century by Ben uh, Yehudu, Ye Yehuda, but it's near enough to the original language to enable anyone who reads it to read the ancient Hebrew of the Bible. If this is so, replied the visitor with some disbelief, call the Sebra working over there and ask her to read your fragment of the Deuteronomy. Although she had no religious education, she should be able to manage it if what you say is true. 
The sun bronze Sabra was called over, and she read every word of the ancient fragment without faltering. The language of the Old Testament is Hebrew, despite the hundreds of years over which it was written, the linguistic differences between the earlier and later writings are few and of no importance. Today, any educated Israeli can read his holy book in his original written down form. A few sections, Aramaic, a few sections of the Old Testament were written in Aramaic. These include some chapters in Ezra and Daniel and one verse in Jeremiah. The Aramaic language is closely related to Hebrew. Aramaic was the language of certain Aramean tribes who migrated from Mesopotamia between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers to Syria in the 8th century BC. The Assyrians forcibly deported Armenians to all provinces of the vast empire, thus disseminating the Aramaic language over a wide area. That certain sections of the Old Testament were written Aramaic is accounted for by the fact that although the wholesale deportation of our Arameans, Arameans, the Assyrians had made Aramaic an international language, hundreds of Ar Aramaic documents from the time of Ezra and Daniel have been found in the Middle East. In the centuries immediately before the birth of Jesus, Aramaic had replaced Hebrew as the language of conversation among the Jews. Nevertheless, when the rabbi read the scrolls and parchments in the synagogue, he read them in Hebrew. The four New Testament accounts of the life of Jesus indicate that though he read Hebrew, he spoke Aramaic. In a number of cases, fragments from the Aramaic conversation of Jesus were retained in the Greek New Testament. In the story of raising of Jairus' daughter, for example, Jesus said the words little girl get up in Aramaic, Tilitha kumi, Greek. The tiny spurs of Aramaic are the exception. The New Testament was written in Greek, Keoi, a Greek or Helen or Ahelen, the name by which he called himself, was a man whose language and culture was Greek. And Greece, or Hellas, the name is used he used, extended as far as the Greek language and culture did. The Keoin Keoin dialectos was the common speech of the Greek community. It drew on several ancient dialects, especially the dialect of Athens, Attic. Before Palestine had become part of the Roman Empire, as it was at the time of Jesus, it had been conquered by Alexander the Great. It was then that the Greek language and culture began to take hold. The Alexander's death, the eastern portion of this empire, was divided between his generals, Ptolemy took Egypt to Palestine, and Seleucus took Thrace to India. The first Jews became Hellenized with those who settled in the new city of Alexandria during the rule of Ptolemy. It is likely that it was during this period that the Jews trading classes and the upper classes of Judea itself began to speak Keoi. It was, however, the Seleucian king Andronicus, Antiochus III and IV who enforced Greek language and culture. The Seleucid capital Antioch became a great centre of Greek sport theatre and pageantry and the extension of the Seleucian Empire to include Palestine provoked reaction among the Jews. The two parties emerged, one supporting, one opposing Greek ways. Welcomed by the Liberals, the Seleucian tyrant Antioch IV entered Jerusalem in 171 BC. He outraged the conservatives and provoked the revolt of the Maccabees by plundering and des desecrating the temple. But the culture and language for which the Seleucids had stood bitten deep into Palestine. The language and aspects of the culture outlived the revolts of the period and the occupation by the Romans. Indeed, Caesar Augustus, who presided over the Roman world in the year Jesus was born, was determined to unite it through the diffusion of Greek culture. The Roman Empire was in fact bilingual. In the Roman army, Latin was the official language, but for the East, Greek remained the official tongue in the eastern Mediterranean lands. In, in Rome itself, Greek was spoken as much as Latin. So, basically, uh, Hebrew, Aramaic and Greek are the foundational languages in the, in the Bible. And uh, there what we have is a, a good historical analysis of why that is, uh, of the cultures of the time. Um, so we're going to look at in the next video who wrote the Bible and when. Okay, I'm going to do it in sections because there's a lot of material to, to think about. 
but just think about this that that in God's providence for example the Greek language was just the right language prepared for the New Testament because it was an international language it was such a rich language and uh, God used that language to spread the gospel throughout the ancient world so that's amazing all right thank you for listening and God bless you